Welcome to South Florida. A beautiful sunny day. The palm trees are waving. The sunshine is in the air. It's hot and steamy at Dry Pink Stadium, the home of Inter Miami. South Florida's MLS team and the Miami Hurricanes will be taking the field to a sold out crowd of over 20,000 today here. Tyler Van Dyke and company. There's Jake Garcia, the backup quarterback. And of course, Mario Cristobal, the man in charge, back at his alma mater. So the Miami Spring game, orange and white game here on ACC Network at Drive Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. And alongside my analyst, Dusty Dvorak, I'm George Sedano. Our on-field analyst, Sam Acho, will join us in just a second. It is spring football, Dusty. How are you feeling about it? Fantastic and improving, I think, just like this Miami Hurricane football team. There is a buzz and an excitement in the air, and it's because they really like this new head coach. And, of course, that head coach, Mario Cristobal, again, an alum here at the University of Miami, a two-time champion here at the University of Miami, has come back to resurrect the program. What do you make of that? He's back home. I love this hire. I love the pass he has for the city of Miami and really for this football program and he told us yesterday he feels this is the best job in all of college football but he knows one thing you got to get to work and that's exactly what his fantastic staff has been able to do there's complete alignment with the administration full commitment everybody's pushing their chips in and it feels like Mario Cristobal is the guy to restore the U to the greatness that they were just 20 years ago yeah five national championship it's been a long time since this team has been in that mix about 20 years or so but the man who could lead that charge on the field is Tyler Van Dyke what do you make of him Dustin I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in college football heading into next season he's probably not getting talked about enough you know a guy that sees the field unbelievably well got great touch on his deep ball a better athlete than you think and a fantastic leader when he came aboard and took over as a starting quarterback the latter half of the season this com offense completely changed and for Josh Gaddis what a great starting point to implement this offense with a guy like Tyler Van Dyke it is a deep quarterback clash in the ACC and of course Tyler Van Dyke could be at the top of that they're the fans throwing up the U they're hoping to be throwing up a lot of U's this season with Mario Cristobal and company the orange and white game here from Fort Lauderdale Drive Pink Stadium continues in a moment. Welcome back to Drive Pink Stadium, Miami Hurricanes spring football game. George Sedano, Dustin Dvorak, and the third member of our team, our on-field analyst, Sam Acho, is with Mario Cristobal. Hey, Coach, you're back home. What can we expect to see from this Miami football team? Nothing but our very best every time we step on the field. That's it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. We're excited. So there you have it. Short and sweet, Dusty. Short, sweet, to the point. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy, George. And you can tell he knows there's work to be done, and that's what he's looking to do here today with this scrimmage. Get these guys in a stadium in as much as a game-like setting and see how they respond. The Mario Cristobal era off and running with that kick. Borregales with the kickoff here. Jacoby George feels it in the end zone. And they'll tell him to stay in, even though he went out. <laughs> they'll give him the touchback on that one. Yeah, I would imagine the special teams coach going to have a little conversation, be a little bit smarter. But his quarterback's got everybody excited about what this offense can potentially be. Oh, Tyler Van Dyke, there's no question about that. This kid has got the goods. And it's a deep quarterback class in the ACC, yeah. for sure, Dusty. Devin Leary, Sam Hartman, Brennan Armstrong. And I put Tyler Van Dyke right there in that conversation, and I think that his ceiling might be even a little bit higher. ACC kind of has become the conference of quarterbacks. And Tyler Van Dyke takes a backseat to no one. So Van Dyke in the gun here. Looks to his left, connects with Restrepo. Short gain there to the 29-yard line. I love what Josh Gaddis said about uh, Restrepo. Called him a junkyard dog. Not flashy, consistent. Very reliable, a guy that feels like is going to be a big focal point at receiver for this offense. There's a lot of talk that he could play similarly to Braxton Barrios a few years ago, though if you ask him who his favorite receiver was, he says Steve Smith of the Carolina Panthers. Here's Van Dyke over the middle, incomplete. So let's take a look at the format here, Dusty. So the first two quarters will be traditional football. And then we'll have a running clock after a short halftime in the second half. And then the scoring, traditional on offense, but the defense is going to be able to score some points here, as you see. I love that. Let's get some uh, credit to the defense. Let them put some, get your sack, get your point. So here's third down and six. 
Van Dyke pumps, goes down the field. He's got a receiver. It's incomplete. Under three. Intended for Frank Latson. There's a flag on the play. I think his offsides, nice on the hard count. Multiple hurricanes. Van Dyke knows I got a free play. With underthrown there. Surprised he didn't connect on that. So here's a replay. Can it can assure you the defensive line coach Joe Salavea and the defensive end coach Rod Wright. High praise for them. Not going to be happy with those guys. Hold your water on third and medium. Expect that hard count. So here's Van Dyke. Third and one. Handoff up the middle. And perhaps they're able to scratch out a first down there. Thomas Davis on the tackle. Henry Parrish is able to pick up the first down. My second effort. There was good penetration initially up front from the Hurricanes defensive line, but good job on the second effort by Henry Parrish, the old Miss transfer. Rave reviews from Josh Gaddis talking about how quickly he's picked up this offense at Miami. And off up the middle again to Parrish. Parrish picks up a nice chunk of change there, gets four. This is really. George, as you know, I mean, by the way, welcome back home to you. Thank you. Uh, very great for you to be back home. Grew up rooting for these Miami Hurricanes. Uh, got a chance to see your family, so I'm sure that was great. But one of the things talking with Josh Gaddis was they got to get back to be able to run the football, right? And, and we know with Mario Cristobal, it's about the line of scrimmage. It's about physicality. So I think as much as anything, they want to see that. They know they've got a good quarterback in Cho and Tyler Van Dyke. Can they get back to be able to win the line of scrimmage and run the football? Huge point of emphasis for this, for this upcoming season. And that's the success Mario Cristobal has had everywhere, including Oregon. And it's the success this Miami Hurricanes team has had in the past. That pass sailed too high for Henry Parrish. So third and six coming up here. See a lot of different wide receiver groupings, I believe, today. Van Dyke looking, throwing towards the sideline. It's complete to Restrepo, who picks up the first down near midfield. Nice job there by Van Dyke. Survey in the field. Restrepo comes open in the flats, quickly identifies him. Nice catch and getting up the field to move the sticks. Conversion there on third down. Isaiah Dunson is a corner that Kevin Steele likes. He likes the corners. He talked, he raved about them with us yesterday. And up up the middle to Franklin. Franklin is a big body, 240 pounds. He can thump some guys, pick up of seven there. He's the bruiser, downhill runner, tap, tough to tackle. Nice job. You see that pull scheme right there. Ole Wachan Ole opens up in the middle and that big body Franklin hits it downhill good physical piece of running there on first down. So we see a fullback you don't see that every day anymore in football. And off up the middle again to Franklin he breaks through the line of scrimmage and picks up a first down. Nice gain there of five yards. This is what you can expect to see from Josh Gaddis. Gap scheme type of offense. They want to run between the tackles. A lot of pullers you're going to see. And it's really predicated on winning the line of scrimmage. Back to back plays. Nice job up front. James Williams on the tackle, the safety. The two lauded safeties, the Williams brothers, James and Avante back there. Play action for Van Dyke. Got plenty of time. Throws it deep down the field. He's got a man, but overshoots his receiver. Incomplete. Hey, that was a double move right there, trying to get Jacoby George over the top. Play action pass, you get a couple of runs. Now you come back with the play action, take your shot. Excellent coverage by DJ Ivy, and you already referenced it. Kevin still clearly loves what he has at corner. He feels they have three legit dudes at quarterback with Al Blades, DJ Ivy to Corey Couch, and you already mentioned Isaiah Dunson. Really good job running stride for stride there by DJ Ivy. Second and 10 here for Van Dyke. Drops back, steps up, takes off, keeps it himself. He's at the 30, 25, and out of bounds near the 20 yard line. Picks up another first down. Nice gain there for Tyler Van Dyke of 18. You know, they say 
He moves better than you think for a big fella. He does. He wants to throw the football. Like he is, he is moving around most of the time to throw. Even there, nice job within the pocket, feels the pressure, steps up, and where do his eyes stay? Down the field. But then he saw a lot of green grass out in front. A nice pickup. 11th play of the drive here for the Canes. They have another first down at their 20 yard line. So the Canes dump it into the flat there, Van Dyke. Nice job there to Henry Parrish. Pick up of about five. So here's what we're looking at with this Miami team. 18 returning players. Nine have moved on. Seven on offense. Eight on defense are still here and three on special teams. So. But this is a team that's going to need to add some depth. Dusty for sure. No question. And we're going to see this around the country. Miami will be no different. I would expect post spring practice we'll see Miami be in the portal to try to address you know maybe some of that loss and try to add some depth uh, to this overall roster. Henry Parrish with a gain of six there another first down James Williams on the tackle for the white team. One guy we won't see today he's not playing but one of those returning starters 85 Will Mallory this staff just raved about the camp that he had you know I, I, Josh Gaddis called him the most impressive player we have offensively. So I, I am going to be a huge focal point of what Josh Gaddis in this offense wants to be. Yeah, Gaddis also added, you can't have enough Mallory's uh, on your roster, and that he had been the best player, as you mentioned before the injury. Here's a handoff on the left side. Gets inside the five-yard line there. So a short gain of four. Tackle by Avante Williams. That is Franklin on that run. This job coming up by Avante Williams, you mentioned. Big hole off the left side. I thought Parrish. Sorry, I thought Franklin might have been able to take it to the end zone. Good open field tackle and tackling, I would say without question, the number one point of emphasis for Kevin Steele in this defense. They were ranked, I believe, 128th in the country last year in tackling. So certainly something that you don't see from a Miami team normally. And off up the middle, Franklin is pushing the pile, gets down to the one yard line. Does not want to go down on first contact. There's a lot of inertia there for sure. Big body guy. Nice push off the right side. 77. Sagapolu transfer in from Oregon. Going to compete for one of those guard positions. Maybe the strongest player on the team. Nice job getting some movement and good extra effort there by Thaddeus Franklin. So third and goal here. Tight formation. Loves the fade. And up up the middle. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Touchdown, Henry Parrish, the young man from South Florida, from Christopher Columbus High School, transfer from Ole Miss. By the way, that high school, the head coach went there, too. So not a bad place to be. And there you go, the first offensive touchdown for this new look offense. And it's Henry Parrish, a guy that the staff is very excited about having. And you got to think Mario Cristobal loves that right. Good mix of run and pass. But, you know, really what catapulted this drive, a couple of nice runs by Thaddeus Franklin and on third and short, right around the goal line. You've got to be able to move bodies and run the ball into the end zone. I'm sure exactly the way Mario Cristobal would have liked to see in that opening possession. 15 plays on that drive, nine runs, six passes, and Tyler Van Dyke and company leading the charge as the Orange team is up 7-0 here in the Hurricane Springway. Let me present you with your new Miami Hurricanes football jersey. Here it is. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Welcome home. Thank you. My God, what an honor. Thank you for everyone that's shown up today. So many people that I had a chance to play with or coach or mentor, um, this is incredible. It's just the beginning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the best way to show it means the world to me is by just relentlessly attacking this opportunity and bringing every possible advantage, teaching moment, whatever it may be, to help our guys take that next step. They deserve that. These players deserve that. They deserve our best, all of us. And. We're all going to give it to him. Thank you very much. Go Canes.
What a cool moment there for Mario Cristobal, a place where he won two championships, gets to come back. He coached here briefly as well. You got the goosebumps. I, got, I see it I, on your partner. I got goosebumps. I ain't even making this up. Like, yeah. I just, it's real with Mario being back. Yeah. It's not fake. It's genuine. It's real. And I can't wait to see exactly what it looks like. And I love the way he continues to talk about, we got to go to work. Nice run off the right side. Devin Perry there with a big run. Nice job there. Jake Garcia in here now, the backup quarterback. 12-yard gain there for Perry. Talked about it being a humbling opportunity. And he's so thankful for so many people. And nice blocking off the right side. Really good job opening up that hole. So thankful for this opportunity. And everything's right. Dan Radakovich in place. This staff he's put together, fantastic. And it just seems like you know, from top to bottom, all signs leading in a good direction for this program. Jake Garcia with the throw on the run there. Former USC commit, came to Miami. Nice catch there. Pressure by Jacob Lichtenstein, speaking of USC, a 12-yard gain on that play. If I'm Jacob Lichtenstein, I'm saying, hey, wait a minute now. I just had a nice <laughs> rush. Give me my sack, and I think they are. They are going to give it to him. Backing them up. Yeah. And you know, Jacob Lichtenstein, you mentioned coming from USC, coach is really happy. Nice little inside move. That's a sack, too. I mean, look, I know for some they may say, no, you can't hit the black jersey, you can't hit the quarterback. Two hands on the waist. Nice rush inside there by Jacob Lichtenstein. Good link. He's had a really productive spring camp here at his new location. Hometown kid, of course. So second and 17 here for Garcia. Quick throw. Picks up a couple of yards. Nice catch there by Worsham. I like the plant and drive by the defensive back, Marcus Clark. Ball caught, see him put that foot in the ground, explode, catch tackle. Setting up third and long, well done in the open field by Marcus Clark. Four yard gain there, third and 13 for Garcia, who's in the gun. Garcia played a little last year, as you saw the numbers earlier. Nice pass there over the seam, though, near the sticks. Did he get enough? We'll see here in a moment. Got about 13 yards to Brashard Smith, and they'll give him that first down. Really like the pocket, pocket presence right here from Jake Garcia. Climbs up in the pocket, and then you see Brashard Smith feels that zone coverage, works to the open area, and an excellent find there by Garcia to move the chains on third down. He's got a little zip on the ball, yeah, too. He does. He can throw it. I like Brashard Smith. Watching him at the end of last season. They move him around, put him at running back. Garcia keeps here, and he'll pick up three yards on that one. Tackle there by Leonard Taylor. They're young, but highly vaulted or vaunted, pardon me, defensive tackle. Well, he's got all the talent in the world. He's quick. Um, you know, he's he's got the type of talent you look for in a potential first-round pick. And based off the way, you know, going back to last season and even spring camp, he flashes, he can be consistent, he's got a chance to be a dominant player. That one sails over the head of their tight end, Mamarelli. So it'll be third and long here for the Canes. Intrigued to see, get a chance to see 23, Jalil Skinner, true freshman tight end. Looks like a receiver, bottom of your screen, lined up as tight end. Excellent ball skills, still learning how to play tight end in college, but high ceiling for that young man. He was a Bama commit, and then Coach Cristobal stole him from his old boss, Nick Saban. Pass over the middle, intended for Smith is incomplete. Nice coverage there by Malik Curtis, so it'll be fourth down. Garcia, two of four on that drive for only 18 yards. Coverage there by Malik Curtis. Tight contested pass right there. Jake Garcia unable to convert that time on third down. You mentioned beating out Bama for a guy like Skinner. That's kind of, I mean, Mario Cristobal is known for being an outstanding recruiter. He learned it there at Alabama, took it to Oregon with great success, and that's what they're looking to be able to do back here at Miami, recruit at the highest levels. So Nelson Foley into punt. Colby George to field it. Nope, lets it sail over his head into the end zone. So there we go, 7-2 to two as the defense put up a score with a stop there. More from the Miami Hurricane Spring game in a moment.
George Sedano, Dusty Dvorak, Sam Acho with you here at the Miami Hurricanes spring game at Drive Pink Stadium, the home of Inter Miami, the MLS team here in South Florida. So Tyler Van Dyke and company taking the field again at their own 20 as the Orange team got a touchdown on their first drive. Play action here for Van Dyke. He keeps it and gets out of bounds at about the 23 yard line. Nice coverage down the field. It's a good decision by Tyler Van Dyke. No one open. A little play action boot. He wanted to go to Elijah Arroyo, his big target. But again, good coverage down the field. DJ Ivy, perfect position once again. And let's talk to a Hall of Famer here. Sam Acho, our pal, has got Ed Reed. Yeah, I'm with Ed Reed, obviously Hall of Famer, Miami great. Ed, what is it like to be back in this environment? Man, it's always awesome to be back, man. You know, I, I mean, I've been here the last two and a half years. You know, so I know what we've been through. You know, I'm looking at where we are now versus where we've been the last two years that I've been here, you know. So, you know, I'm excited, man. It's been exciting. You know, we're doing we're doing things different, you know, and the kids are looking a lot better, looking like they bought into it, you know, and uh, we just got to keep growing. What's different this year than the years you've been here before? I mean, just the mentality, you know, the mentality, you know, you see the teaching that that is going on, you know, and uh, just competing. Just competing against each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, just a diff different atmosphere, man. You know, it's different teaching, deep, different leadership. So with that comes a different mentality, you know what I'm saying? So. I mean, you've seen what it's been. I mean, obviously, we got to play. We got to play some football against other teams outside of ourselves, and you know we'll be doing that in the fall. But right now, it's about building. When you played, Ed, and we talked earlier, you played with heart. Like you changed the game. When you see guys here, is that something that can be built or is it bred? Uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, it's a little bit of both, man. You got to want it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to want it for yourself. You got to want it for your teammates. You know, and. Um, we get that, man. You got guys coming into it, man. You got guys that are fresh into it. Plus, they fresh into a new system of what Coach Mario doing, you know. So, you know, it takes some time, man. You know, it definitely takes time, man. You know, and uh, we'll, we'll see it happen. We'll see it happen, man. You see guys that's, I can tell you guys for sure, that's changing right in front of us, you know. You should better see it. And last thing, is there one or two players you've been watching that you say, man, this guy's grown a lot in this system? I'm, I'm, I'm all I'm a safety by heart, man. I'm a defensive guy by heart, you know, but I'm always looking at our receivers and our defensive backs. You know, I'm looking at Vontae and James. I'm looking at Keyshawn. And I'm looking at Jacoby and like, you know, I'm always looking at those guys. Hasm, Hasm is one of those kids who came in with me, like, you know, and I, I watched him. Um, I had him and um, Vontae at um, U, the Under Armour um, camp. So I'm always watching those guys, man. You know, but all of them, man. It's, yeah, I've been here, so I'm, I, you know, all of them, I always got a point. I'm always walking by, giving them something that I've seen they doing on tape or on the field. Corey Flagg, just talking to him today, like, man, you know, I know you're running twos right now, but I see your heart. I see you working. You know, you 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 doing things that set apart. Just keep doing it. You know, so so many of them, man. Just all in those different moments. You know. Well, I appreciate it, Ed. This is NFL royalty, Ed Reed, Chief of Staff at University of Miami, Hall of Famer. Appreciate you, brother. Great stuff there with Ed Reed. Sam doing a fantastic job down there, and the defense held there. We'll talk more about that drive on the other side and plenty more guests here at the University of Miami spring game here on the ACC Network. The University of Miami has five national championships. It started with that one there. Melvin Bratton, Howard Schnellenberger, and then Jimmy Johnson took over. Dennis Erickson won a couple. With Gino Toretta, Rusty Medeiros you see there. And the last one in 2001, there's Andre Johnson, Ken Dorsey, Willis McGay, Clinton Portis, Larry Coker, the head coach, and now Mario Cristobal, who won two championships here, trying to add to that total. Dusty Dvorak, there's going to be a long road. Speaking of long road, big run there. The road was paved for 
that is Franklin. But a long road for Mario Cristobal. He knows there's going to be a lot of work here to get back to that level. No question. But that's that's the expectation. That's the standard. That he's going to hold everybody affiliated with this program too to get back to that point. And the one thing about that, those five championships over those what 19, 20 years, four different head coaches. So what does that tell you? That tells you that this program, you know, some programs are about the coach. This program, I think it's about the place. It's about the location that you're in uh, relative to the phenomenal football players. And it just shows when you get this thing right, what it's capable of being. And I think that that is something that Mario, obviously the passion playing here, but he also understands when that many different head coaches come in and you sustain that level of success, it tells you right there, great things are clearly attainable here at the U. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And he feels that he can get them back there. Here's Jake Garcia over the middle. Nice pass there, complete for about six yards to Jaleel Skinner, who we were talking about earlier. And of course, having Ed Reed here, yeah. being part of that last national championship, Hall of Famer. They got a lot of Hall of Famers around here. Right. You got Ed Reed, you got Jason Taylor as an analyst, not a coach, an analyst. And he's all in, right? I mean, he is all in to be a part of this staff and really help this program get to where it's going. By the way, Ed Reed, one of my all-time favorite players. Ed Reed played the game the way you're supposed to play. Just him being around this program, that's going to pay dividends. We saw Jason Taylor there a moment ago, and defensive coordinator Kevin Steele told us he's here as an analyst. Yeah. And he's got no ego, checks it at the door. He's guy's got a gold jacket, and he's like, we got to kick him out of here sometimes. <laughs> Brings it every single day. Uh, you got to respect the heck out of a guy like Jason Taylor. Maybe the best long arm rush for the edge rushers out there watching. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe the best long arm we've ever seen in the National Football League. For him to be able to be around these players, help educate them, teach them properly, man, what a what a resource he is for these guys. Nice stuff there by the defense. Woo. Excellent work there by Gilbert Frierson. So it'll be fourth down, and that was it right there. How about off the edge here? Look at Frierson. What a count for, like he shot out of a cannon. Nice big hit behind the line of scrimmage. Set the tone for Kevin Steele in that defense. He was previously in what they called the striker position, but he's going to be playing the linebacker position for the University of Miami with this particular group. And again, 128th in tackles last year. Looking much improved today. Right there, no question. Big collision. Well, physicality, Mario Cristobal, he's an offensive lineman at heart where his eyes always go, but you know, he's got to love a stop like that from his defense. Yeah, stop on fourth down, so. And yeah. for me, the defensive guy, the defensive yeah, points, you know what I'm talking now. about? Defense with the lead right now, the white team is the defense, the orange is the offensive team, and Coach Cristobal wants to make sure those defensive guys feel like they're getting some love, so they got a point tally as well. But now Tyler Van Dyke and company are out there. So the ones will be going against the ones here. Van Dyke under pressure, throws it over the middle, incomplete, intended for his running back Henry Parrish out of the backfield. James Williams with the hit there. It's good pressure inside. Leonard Taylor, we mentioned him earlier, probably has the highest ceiling of anybody up front. One of the top defensive tackles coming out just a couple of years ago. ESPN Adam is a five star number two D tackle number six overall player seeing these last two possessions He's starting to get it going there in the middle three straight incompletions for Van Dyke second and ten here from the 41 yard line Van Dyke over the middle to Restrepo a little too far in front of him Restrepo cannot pull it in so third down and ten. You see Van Dyke off just a little bit. I mean, because his accuracy, when you start talking about his attributes, accuracy is one of the first words you come to. He's been off just a touch. Previous possession, I thought he threw a great deep ball to George. Just kind of wasn't able to bring it in. If he can convert here on third down. Yeah, they've been off by just a yeah. couple of inches on some of these plays on offense. That first drive was fantastic, but they uh, they've they struggled a little bit since then. Both the ones and the two. Here's Van Dyke. Plenty of time over the middle. Wide open there is Khalil Brantley. 
And he gets into white territory as he's down inside the 35-yard line. 20, sorry about that, 26-yard gain there. It took a while for Brantley to come open. It's the protection. Outstanding job by the offensive line. Look how much time Van Dyke has to survey the field. Brantley comes open, and he fires a strike to his open tight end. Nice conversion there on third down, all set up by the quality protection. This should be the last play of the quarter here. So Van Dyke finds Brantley again over the middle. Picks up another first down. So near the 20-yard line, that'll be the end of the first quarter. The Canes in striking position on offense. The Orange team trying to put some more points on the board. The fans are in the house. There's some hitting going on, real tackling. And we'll see who comes out on top, orange or white. Sedano, Dusty Dvorak here at the Miami Spring Game. And let's talk to the new athletic director of the University of Miami, our friend Sam Macho, has got Dan Radakovich. So we're here with Dan Radakovich, the new athletic director for the University of Miami. You spent nine years at Clemson, built an unbelievable program. Now you're here. What can the fans expect to see when it comes to facilities and this team? Well, thanks, Sam, first of all, for being here today. You know, I think that we, what we have to do is be true to the university. We got to build things that make a difference here in South Florida. There's some uh, there's some buildings we want to pull together to help our student athletes continue to move ahead and give our coaches the opportunity to bring quality student athletes here to South Florida at the University of Miami. Dan, you, you went here. You got your MBA here. You talked about how a lot of former players retire here. You just saw Coach Cristobal hugging some of the former players of former greats. What does that mean for you? Well, it just shows how tight the University of Miami and their alumni and their current players and all the folks who helped build the University of Miami into such a great national brand. They're here. They're on this sideline. You know, you turn the camera around and there they are. But it's a it's it's really a Canes thing, as they said. Yeah. It's something different. And we want to make sure that whatever we do on our campus welcomes them back. It's so important. Well, you, you also had a great basketball run, as we know, and also the baseball team's doing great, too. Tell me about all the sports coming together under your leadership. Well, it, it's really about those coaches and those student athletes. I mean, they've, they've really, Coach Larinaga, Coach Meyer on basketball side have just been phenomenal. And our baseball team is just, they hit their stride, and I think they're really playing well. And, and this is the time when your baseball team needs to move forward. But the basketball runs were very special and really appreciated being a part of that. And, and Dan, you, you championed getting great great facilities at Clemson. You talked about coming here and wanting to make sure something like that was in place. How are you going to go about renovating and getting the facilities needed to make this program great again? Well, first of all, there's a few people up in pink seats over here who are, who are some of our golden canes. I'm going to be really, really familiar with them very, very soon so that we can get the resources to be able to go and do that. But I really don't think that's going to be a difficult sell because so many people want the university and understand what we need to do, that there hasn't been that, that commitment to those facilities over the past decade or so we need to be we, we built a great indoor practice facility but we need to do a little bit more so I think people are excited and I just need to be able to work with Mario and other folks to let them let them pull it all together and let us move forward and last thing you saw the commitment when they hired Mario you saw the commitment when they hired you brought off this brought in this amazing coaching staff what does that mean, that commitment that you're already seeing? How excited do you get for the future of the University of Miami? Well, that set the table. You know, when you had that commitment from Mario and his staff and those folks coming here, you knew at that point in time that there was going to be more to come after that. You just needed to be able to pull it together the right way, and that's what we look to do each and every day. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dan. Sam, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Great job there with Dan Radakovich. And by the way, great job on your book, Let the World See You. If you're looking for an inspirational story, Sam Acho wrote this fantastic book, and you should check it out for yourself wherever you find your books, whether it's Amazon or wherever. You go to a traditional bookstore. Do you still go to a traditional bookstore? I, uh, I do not. Nice catch there. Did he get in? No. Just short. I do not, but Sam has been doing great things with him and his brother, Manuel, and his book, one of the best sellers. So congrats to Sam on all that success. Fourth and short, I mean, I would imagine we're gonna see a little bit of the run game here, create yeah. a little goal line situation. Maybe the big fella, that is Franklin, though Parrish is in there right now. 
Bears banged it in last time they were in close. I do like to still go and grab a book oh. and buy one occasionally. Yes. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a perfect one for you to go grab. Let the world see you yeah. by Sam Acho. Perfect. All right, so fourth and short here at the goal line. Handoff up the middle. There's a score, but a flag. It's going to be too many, too many players on defense. Yeah. It looks like Isaiah Dunson, though, yeah. may have jumped on the defense, so the score should stand. Nice job capping off that drive. A couple of really good throws there. Uh, really on a, on a deep over, we saw Tyler Van Dyke locate Restrepo. A lot of defensive hurricanes <laughs> on the field. Yeah, there's a lot. There's too many, clearly. Oh, there's Dunson trying to run off at get the end. Off. Yeah. Get off the field. But nice, nice job executing, getting the ball down the field, capping it off with a touchdown pass. Back to that Dan Radakovich interview. The commitment, we've talked about that several times here. There's a financial commitment. And it started with the staff. This staff is stellar, and it's the recruiting staff, it's the analysts, and soon the facilities to come next. Absolutely. Van Dyke, four of six on that drive for 56 yards. More action from the Hurricane Spring Game in a moment. There's plenty of hardware here at the U. Some Heisman Trophy winners, Vinny Testaverde back in 1986 under Jimmy Johnson, Gino Toretta in 1992 under Dennis Erickson. And could you have a new Heisman candidate here with Tyler Van Dyke? What say you, partner? I mean, I wouldn't put him at the top of the list, but I think he's got to be a player to keep your eye on. He's picked up this offense of Josh Gaddis very quickly. He's got the skill set. We'll see exactly what that looks like this upcoming season, but I would definitely keep my eye on Tyler Van Dyke. You know, if all the stars align, he could put together a pretty special season in 2022. So Curry Brown checks in at quarterback, the third stringer. Likes takes him. off himself. Like some of those passes we saw from Van Dyke. I wonder if we get a chance to keep seeing him here throughout this first half. Big upside with him. You mentioned Jacuri Brown. You know, he's a tall, athletic quarterback, and Josh Gaddis told us that he's continuing to develop as a thrower. Said he actually had a couple of his best passes earlier this week. Threw a 50-yard bomb in uh, practice for a touchdown. And here's Perry mowing through the line of scrimmage. Curry, or Ja'Curry, they call him Curry, Ja'Curry Brown is, uh, he ran the wing tee in high school, yeah. man. I didn't even know there were high schools still running the wing tee. I didn't either. Old school football. He's getting more and more acclimated. He'd still be in high school right now, getting acclimated to this offense. And you could tell the staff excited about the future for him as he continues to get more and more comfortable and develop as a passer. Third and three here for Brown and company. Brown with some time. Sales one over his receiver intended for Keyshawn Smith. So fourth down coming up. Pass just, you know, coming out of his hand, coming out of Brown's hand, just felt like it got away from him a little bit. Airmailed that on the slant. Keyshawn Smith, pretty good coverage there on him. Keyshawn Smith last year was the number three receiver. They're looking for him to see if he can make that leap to being one of the top two guys this season. Yeah, I think Restrepo, Keyshawn Smith, you know, Frank Ladson, the Clemson transfer has got great size, deep ball ability. And then Jacoby George, guy who's been making spectacular catches this spring. They loved his ball skills. I think that's the kind of the group that you should anticipate to take the lead coming in next fall. Colby George there receives the punt and the orange team will get back at it as they lead 14 to 10 here plenty of time here in the second quarter and again if you're just tuning in they will run a traditional clock and game here in the first half and then in the second half it'll be a running clock it'll be more situational my guess is in the second half and there's the scoring tally for you traditional on offense and on defense they're scoring some points coach Cristobal's giving the defense some incentive Love it. Well, three and out there. Three more points on the board for Kevin Stills' defense. You got to create some competition. See how these guys respond. Good competition going on here so far. Jake Garcia checks in at quarterback with the twos. Well, he's playing with some of the ones out yeah, there, I think actually, as well. Of the, most yeah. of the starting offensive line out there, Restrepo in the yeah. slot. Yeah. 
The ball on the 30-yard line. Play action for Garcia. In trouble. Steps up. Throws it over the middle. Restrepo. And it's caught. Caught on the other side of the field. So big play there. 22-yard gain. Nice strike from Garcia to Restrepo. It was a good strike. I wonder if he got it off in time. Thomas Davis shot out of a cannon off the edge. Nice speed rush on Zion Nelson. Uh, he got him. And, you know, it's interesting. I was talking with some coaches before today's practice. They said Thomas Davis, he's undersized, but he's a ball player. Thomas, motor. Thomas Davis not getting the same luxury that, and there's an incomplete pass there, that Jacob Lichtenstein got earlier when he was throwing his hands up. Maybe he should have thrown his hands up. Hey, coach, I tapped him on the rear. Can I get a sack? We fight hard for those sacks, <laughs> George. <laughs> Defense alignment, man, when you get the opportunity, you get there. You guys get the short end of the stick on, the, on these spring games, particularly, Always. though. Yeah. yeah. Let the quarterback go. <laughs> Let him make plays. But then you get yelled at whenever you get meetings next week with your defensive staff. <laughs> well, and Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, told us in his wonderful southern twang, and a nice pickup there by the running back, Henry Parrish, he told us, we're not going to get this quarterback hurt now, you hear? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, it looks like we have an injury here. So let's step aside as Henry Parrish is down. They'll check in on him. More and an update on that in just a moment. Here's the schedule for the Hurricanes this upcoming season. Dusty, how do you feel about it? I was in College Station last week. That's going to be a great measuring stick to see where this program is in Kyle Field on September 17th. I think it's very... Uh, I think they can navigate through the schedule pretty darn well. At Clemson looks pretty daunting at the end of the season. But I, I think that that's a, a schedule that Mario Cristobal has to look at, and he's got to like. I think there's a lot of wins on that schedule for this team next year. Yeah, at Clemson is tough, as you mentioned. And then Pittsburgh at home yep. against Keaton Slovis and company. Henry Parrish has had a great day today. Good news is he was dinged up before we went to break, but he is up and walking around on his own power. But he's showing some power and some speed here today. Electric. You know, he had a 111-yard day against Arkansas a year ago at Ole Miss. And again, offers some versatility with, the, with uh, the ability to catch the football as well. Nice pass over the middle there to the big target, Elijah Royo. James Williams on the tackle there. 17-yard gain for Garcia, who's running with the ones. And look, Jalen Knighton is not out here. He's a home run hitter. He had a nice freshman season a year ago. He's not participating here today. But, you know, I think Knighton, Parrish going to be that one-two push. And then you got the hammer with Franklin. It kind of feels like that's going to be uh, the three running backs that Josh Gaddis is going to utilize next fall. Nice stop there. Chance Williams. Big stop in the backfield on the big fella, Thaddeus Franklin. And don't forget Donald Cheney, absolutely, who was hurt last season, mm -hmm. coming off a, a, a serious injury. But there is a possibility. You know, they're not going to rush him back, but there's a possibility he could see some action as well. Three-yard loss on that play. I think the biggest thing for Cheney, you just got to stay healthy, right? A couple of, last couple of seasons been banged up, banged up again here this spring. Health always such a key. Uh, but there's there's no question. Just getting Jalen Knighton back just adds some nice depth to that running back room. Here's Garcia, plenty of time. Finds a soft spot in the middle of the field to Franklin, the big fella. Gets down near the 10 yard line. So nice play there by Garcia, checking it down and finding the big man. At 243, when he gets in the open field, safety's kind of like, oh, what do I do? It's a business decision. <laughs> oh, there's no question about that. You can. You can talk to that more than I could, for sure. I love this forward lean here, the finish at the end. Runs through to Corey Couch after the nice pickup. So first down here from the 10. Dumps it into the flat again to the big fella, Franklin. He gets stood up at the 10-yard line, no gain. It's a nice play there by Avante Williams. Took on the, the block of Arroyo outside. He really set that edge and helped on the tackle with Corey Flagg. Really well leveraged right there by 15, Avante Williams. I like those safeties, man. James Williams, by the way, zero. We haven't called his name. Avante Williams right there. He's a thumper, a physical player. Uh, you know, he really, really 
came on last year. And then James Williams. How about 6'5", 225. North Carolina game last year, like the light bulb went off. I think he's got a massive ceiling at the safety spot. When you look at James Williams, a pass there over the middle on the slant is complete to Jacoby George, to Corey Couch on the tackle, so a short game. But you look at James Williams, if you didn't know he was a safety, you'd think, oh, is he a defensive end prospect? Right. It's well, wild. Came in as an outside linebacker. That's yeah. what he was recruited as. And he's just kind of morphed into this safety that you talk with some of the staff. He's got that mindset of the old school safeties, maybe like that guy we saw earlier, Ed Reed. So looking to see how he develops. Third, for Kevin Steele. Third and goal here for Garcia, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. You can't get right here, bro. And then make a move. It ain't gonna work. Garcia over the middle. It is incomplete. Intended for Frank Ladson. Isaiah Dunson. Excellent job with the pass breakup. Protection's good. Plenty of time for Garcia to survey the field. Dunson stride for stride. The intended target. Nice job getting that hand in there and breaking up the pass to Ladson. So Borregales will attempt a field goal here on fourth down. Borregales, 17 of 21 last year. Only missed one inside of 20. Miami's kicking game prior to him was, uh, let's call it an adventure prior to his arrival, but there's a flag on the play here. An adventure you'd like to forget? Yes. George? Yes. <laughs> if you're them, for sure. So it's going to be offsides. Field goal is going to be good. So the orange team puts up three more. We'll have more for the Miami spring game here in just a moment. Did you know you can address one of the root causes of aging by targeting all the cells in your body? Try True Niagen. Life as we know it cannot exist without NAD. As we age, NAD can decrease by as much as 50%. True Niagen is proven to increase NAD to support heart and muscle health and energy production that starts in your cells. Address one of the root causes of aging with True Niagen, researched by the world's top scientific institutions. accident that's not your fault and you don't have an attorney listen up we have legal professionals standing by to answer your questions and tell you what your case is potentially worth hi i'm gina along with spokesman rob so rob tell the folks at home who should call right now just like you said gina anyone who's been injured in an accident that was not your fault you don't have an attorney give us a call right now we're going to answer all of your questions and we'll let you know what your case is potentially worth thanks rob you heard it folks at home pick up the phone call now are you waking up in the morning with a sore jaw, headaches, maybe even ringing in your ears, all because you're grinding and clenching your teeth at night? That's exactly what was going on with me. That's when I found this, the Brux Night Guard. Now the Brux Night Guard redirects the bite force away from the back teeth, reducing jaw pain while still protecting the teeth. This unique design is what makes Brux Night Guard different from all other traditional grind guards. Go to BruxNightGuard.com and order yours today. Dino, Dusty Dvorak, Sam Acho with you here. And we've talked a lot about this insane Miami staff. And defensively, they've been great. We haven't even mentioned Charlie Strong yet. Charlie Strong, a huge piece, coaching linebackers, Cody Court. How about the defense making some plays? Lipton style with a nice rush. It's a fourth down stop by Frierson, shooting it off the edge. Love this. Josh Gaddis getting to the tricks. The Corey Couch says, not up in here. And how about Leonard? Taylor with a nice inside rush before the to Corey Couch pass breakup. Charlie Strong, an awesome addition, great recruiter, great defensive mind. You pair him with Kevin Steele. Man, you got to love what they put in place on that side of the ball, George. Let's go downstairs to Sam, who's with a former defensive standout here at the U. Well, in the NFL, 
Trail, what have you been seeing from this Miami team? Well, first thing, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more attitude, which is something that we've been missing for numerous of years. You know, I love to see Coach Scott, I love to see Coach push the ball back here, and well, it's a final round, which is something that's going to be tremendous for them this year. And you were with Coach Cristobal. When you were playing, he was a coach. Are there similarities, differences? Did you know he was going to be this kind of coach years ago? No, you know, you, you never know. You never know. And, uh, you know, hindsight is 20 20, but Coach Cristobal still has the same swag, still a great guy, man. But more importantly, he understands the tradition. He understands what it takes to be and to wear that U on the side of your helmet. And he's trying to bring that back. What does that tradition mean, that, that wearing the U on the side of your helmet? How can you put it into words? You know, it's no guts, no glory. You know, it's all out effort. You got to give everything you got at every given point in time. You know, there's no such thing as a let off. You know, when we were here at Miami, just the guys behind you were probably better than you. So in order for you to keep your, jo your job, you couldn't let them get on the field. That was our mentality. You know, you play hurt, you play injured. It didn't matter what it was, and you play for the guy beside you. And I think he's trying to instill that mentality in those guys. And so far, so good. You know, you see the attitude. You see guys flying around. You see the chemistry. But... You're only going to be able to tell come Saturdays. When you talk about recruiting, obviously a lot of players from this state are going to Florida and going to, excuse me, going to Georgia and going to Alabama. How do you keep them here at the U? You got to win. You have to win. And guys are, you know, we, we all follow patterns. We all follow the, the, the trend. And what guys are seeing is guys have been going to Alabama, Georgia, LSUs and things of that nature. We're not keeping our own guys in our backyard. But I couldn't blame them. You know, we haven't been a winning program. You know, when we go against the tough games, we haven't won the tough games. And that's what they're trying to instill now. You know, back then, we were the dominant forces. And we're not that at this point in time. And Georgia, the Alabama, those guys are the dominant forces. So in order to make that happen and keep those guys here, we have to be the dominant force. We have to be, you know, amongst the top three or four teams in the, the collegiate football era. And right now, it's not that. But that's what we're trying to get back to. If there's one thing that you want to see from this defense, what would that be? And still, and still will, you know, and still fear in your opponents. You know, and when, when you talk to guys in the NFL, right, and we talk to them about UM in, in, in those times and back in the days when we played, they were like, man, when you guys came out of the tunnel, like, we were already shook. You know, we, we set a presence coming out of a tunnel. We set a presence on special teams on kickoff. We were knocking heads loose. We have to get back to the fear. I don't think teams, when they look at you on the record, they see, uh, you know, talent, but we can win this game. When you saw us on, on, the, on, the, on your schedule back then, there was no way in hell you were winning that game. Like, you didn't even think you were winning. You were hoping to get a touchdown. You know, and that's the mentality that you have to get back to. You got to have a dog mentality. No guts, no glory. You had to let it hang out at all point in time. And still fear. And what's it like having Charlie Strong back? Uh, you know, Charlie Strong, you know, he's he's one of the one of the top dogs, you know, and to have him on that coaching staff, I think that's huge. I think he's gonna compliment Coach Crystal Ball so well and the rest of the staff. And like I said, you know, he's built a, a dynamic staff when you look at the name, right? But the coaches don't coach. The players have to go out there and play the game, and it's gonna come from the heart. You know, it's going to be the one to either you want to get it or you don't. And we'll see. Thank you so much. Three time pro bowler with a lot of heart and trail roll. Thank you, brother. Three time. All right, Sam. Thank you very much. And Antrell as well. He mentioned Super Bowl champion as well. Three time pro bowler. BCS national champion at Miami. First team, all ACC, all Big East when they were in the Big East. I mean, he spoke the gospel to Miami fans there. That's what they want to hear. I love what I just heard from Antrell Roll. And he said a lot of the same things that Mario Cristobal said, right? He's talking about the work and the grind and, you know, the, the, the level of player. I love what he said about whenever I played here, the guy behind me was more talented, so I had to show up every single day. It's exactly what Mario Cristobal wants to create, competition. And what he used yesterday, iron sharpens iron, that's what they want to get back to. They want to get to work. They want to recruit, own these borders, right? Own this Florida, state of Florida and the area of Miami. Keep these great players right here. Build that roster and then flat out get after it and compete each and every day. And, and you know, to me, that is the secret in the sauce. That's how you create one of the best programs in college football. And you're right, Antrell Roll. He's speaking the gospel right there to Kings fans. Tyler Van Dyke hopefully will be speaking the gospel to Canes fans as he completes the pass there to Jacoby George at midfield. A lot of coaching changes. You know, we mentioned Mario Cristobal. You heard Antro Roll talking about this coaching staff. There's a lot of names there that from this offseason that either change 
places or were brought back like a Jim Mora. Jim Mora back in college football. And these are some marquee programs now. The U, Florida, LSU, USC, OU, Notre Dame. Even Oregon now, what they've become under Chip Kelly and Mario Cristobal kept that going. Some of the elite, some of the elite jobs in the country. Uh, new faces there, and I can't wait to see exactly how these new coaches do in their respective places. Brian Kelly and LSU, that's come with uh, a lot of conversation, and I can't wait to see exactly how quickly he's able to get LSU back to the top of the SEC in college football as well. Van Dyke there finds Elijah Arroyo for a first down. Young man from Frisco, Texas. He dumps it over the middle again to Arroyo. Pick up there of five. Corey Flagg on the tackle for Miami. Corey Flagg, someone who had Reed mentioned, yep. that he likes the way he's progressing during camp. Vocal leader. Uh, improved a lot this spring. And coaching staff says very competitive. Hurry up offense here for Miami. Quick pass to the boundary to Jacoby George. Near the sticks. Nice job by Dunson to get him down in bounds. Force him to use a timeout. So they do pick up the first down. The offense trying to take the lead here before the end of the half. The white team is the defense. They are leading by one with 50 seconds to go. So much for that timeout I thought they were using. I saw the staff come on the field and I thought they burned one. Well, when they gave them the first down, they yeah. were good to go. They got maybe they got a little uh, a little, love. little home <laughs> cooking on that one. Incomplete there. Jacoby George, the intended target, Isaiah Dunson in coverage. Yeah. They get a reprieve today. <laughs> in season, you got to get back. But today, coach is on the field, coaching them up. I was watching the Clemson game where Dabo was mic'd up, basically doing the game call with them. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. Yeah. When you win two national championships, you do what you want. Yeah, I don't think Nick Saban's doing that, though, is just my guess. So pass over the middle there. Nice hit. Monte Williams shows up with bad intentions. Okay, little Brantley with the catch there. So it'll be third down coming up. We'll have more in the conclusion of this drive in just a moment. Welcome back to Drive Pink Stadium here in Fort Lauderdale. The Miami Hurricanes spring game, the orange and white game. George Sedano, Dusty Dvorak, Sam Ancho with you here. This stadium, the MLS home of Inter Miami here in South Florida. So 36 seconds to go here in the half. Tyler Van Dyke and company on third down. And incomplete. It looks like he was trying to hold it at the last second and pull it back, but did not work out for him. Tried to change his mind mid throw, and the arm had already made its mind up. <laughs> Could not hold on to it. I would imagine we see him go for it here on fourth down. Probably more of a field goal scenario in a regular game, but I think given today, why not see if you're quality quarterback and convert and keep this drive going. Van Dyke is five of seven on this drive for 29 yards. So fourth and five manageable. Parrish back in the game. They dump it in the flat to Parrish. Parrish juggles it is able to catch it and gets the first down and then some. But do we have a flag on the play. No. Near side, offensive oh, coaches I see it here, pointing yeah. to the defense. Yep, was blocked by the uh, coaches <laughs> in my sight line. Like this play design, man-to-man -man coverage, linebacker flag unable to get over the top, an easy little dump down the flats. The speedy Henry Parrish. Defense number zero, half the distance to the goal line, first down. So it's on James Williams. So half the distance to the goal. Defense has gotten some flags. They haven't gotten the benefit of the sacks, right? But they've gotten some flags. You know, the refs are also in springtime. They're getting some work in. Absolutely, no question. And let's face it, it's an offensive world we all live in, George. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive player. Oh, bad snap there, and it's on the ground, and the defense recovers. Jacob Lichtenstein with the recovery there. So not an offensive world anymore. Jacob Lichtenstein already with the sack. Now he gets a fumble recovery. I can assure you that's going to be something that Alex Mirabal, outstanding offensive line coach, Mario's right-hand man. 
Van Dyke not ready for it. Ja'Kai Clark just a little bit premature there. Looked like Van Dyke was still surveying the field, calling out some signals. Lichtenstein likes it. And we also have a delay of game as well. So is that going to give the offense a first down? Like I said. <laughs> you know what, partner? Like, like I said, George, <laughs> it's an offensive world. <laughs> and we are definitely living in it. No question. Excessive celebration. I feel like I'm watching the U documentary where they did the thing of the NCAA utilizing them as uh, every example back in the 80s. So here's Van Dyke. Hands it off up the middle to Parrish. And Parrish gets in. Check that. That's Franklin for the touchdown there. So the offense gets one. And they close out the half, or they're about to close out the half, with a lead. Nice job there inside. Nice piece of running by the big body, Thaddeus Franklin. It's like a polo on a pool. Got a nice job. The Oregon transfer is going to be competing for one of those guard spots. We haven't really talked a lot about the offensive line, but if you talk to Mario Cristobal, that's all he talks about. Ja'Kai Clark mentioned him, the center. Feel really good about his veteran presence. DJ Scaife is the leader of that offensive line. He's been playing uh, on this offensive line for quite some time. The most talented, I think, is the left tackle, Zion Nelson. I love his footwork and told me that he's really improved with his hands and pass protection here this spring. They feel like they've got three solid, sound pieces of that foundational core up front, and then they're going to compete for a couple of those other spots. Zion Nelson, when he arrived at the University of Miami, was 240 pounds. Mm. Weighs 320 now. He got thrown in there early. Remember a couple of years ago? And he was still probably like 260, 270. He was fighting, scratching, clawing, took some lumps, and really paid dividends as he's rounded into a, a really quality offensive lineman in the ACC. And DJ Scaife, it's funny because they say he is a perfect fit with this staff. Yeah. They love a little nasty in their offensive line, and DJ has got that in him for sure. We're efforting to get Coach Cristobal here at halftime. A little nasty. They want a lot of nasty. They do want a lot from of their nasty. offensive line. Let's send it out to Sam with Coach Cristobal. Hey, Coach, what have you seen so far from this first half? What do you like? What do you not like? Well, I like the fact that we're doing some things in the run game that are really good. I don't like the fact that we have some really good throws and opportunities for big plays, and we're not coming down with the ball. And we're not straining to come down with the ball. And we got to change that. You talked about this first opportunity for the players to show the world what Miami football is all about. Obviously, it's just the first half, got a second half to go. What are you going to tell your guys at this halftime for the second half? Same thing. Nothing but our very best is going to be good enough. You know, the second half now, we go thud. We're not going full tackle to the ground, and it's a running clock, but the mentality shouldn't change. We have work to do. we got to close that gap to where we are and where we want to be, so let's get to work. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. All right, Sam, thank you very much. So right now, the orange team leading the white team, the offense leading the defense, 24 to 18. We'll be back for the second half here from Dry Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale for the Miami Hurricanes spring game in just a moment. Welcome back to the Miami spring game. Here's some of the greats of the University of Miami, Ted Hendricks, Jim Kelly, Bernie Kozar, who won their first national championship with Howard Schnellenberger, Michael Irvin, the playmaker. Nobody reps to you more than him. Warren Sapp, nice tuxedo there by Warren. Ray Lewis, and of course, Ed Reed, who we spoke to earlier, won the most recent national championship with Miami back in 2001. That great team in 2001 had 26 first round picks eventually. Five natties for Miami, a couple of Heisman Trophy winners, 62 first rounders in the NFL, and tons of Hall of Famers in both college and the pro ranks. There's one right there, Ed Reed, their chief of staff here at the U. A 20 year stretch as dominant a reign, really, as you'll see in college football. Unbelievably impressive, and that's what they're looking to recreate now with Mario Cristobal. And speaking of the greats here at the University of Miami, Sam's with another great, Brian McKinney. So I'm here, I'm here with Brian McKinney, another one of the greats from the University of Miami. Uh, Brian, you talked, I asked you, did you know how great y'all were back then? And what, what do you, did you know? 
No, not at all. We just knew we wanted to accomplish. We wanted to be great. We wanted to win the national championship. So that was the thing that was all embedded in everybody, especially our junior year. Well, my junior year of losing that one game and not being able to play in that championship. So going into my senior year, that was like the goal. What about this team? You've been out here practice all day at the spring game. You've been watching. What do you like so far? What I like so far is the pass protection. I feel like they've been able to keep their quarterbacks protected, and that's big. And I feel like in the past, that was like kind of an issue. So being able to keep the quarterback protected and make him feel safe, he'll make some great throws, and there'll be some, you know, some good yardage and stuff on offense. As far as tips for offensive linemen, right? You're big, you're strong, you played not only at this level, but professionally for a long time at a high level. What tips do you have to protect a quarterback like Tyler Van Dyke? Well, just always master your technique, keep your hands inside hand um, dominance, and just keep. My logo is move your feet, you can't get beat. So always keep your feet moving. Awesome. And, and you've been talking a little bit of smack. You said you want to interview me. You still want to give it a shot? Or? I did, but I'm over it because they wasn't ready. Y'all wasn't ready upstairs. So <laughs> we missed that moment. We missed the moment. Brian McKinney, we are disappointed, but, man, we're honored to have you. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. Move your feet. You can't be beat, I Dusty like Dvorak. I like that. Uh, I like it a lot. I thought it was. Ooh. Oh, interception. Tip pass there by Jacob Lichtenstein. And an interception by James Williams, as you mentioned. He is a ball hawk back there. Jacob Lichtenstein's been all over the field today. And here's one thing as a, as a rusher, you know, you can't get there, get your hands up last second. That was a twist game by the tackle in the end. And that ball's up in the air. And James Williams with a nice quality takeaway. Love to see that, the pass rush helping the secondary to create that takeaway. Good pressure there by the defensive front on Ja'Curry Brown. And you know, you know what they used to call Brian McKinney here? Mount McKinney. He looks like Mount McKinney. <laughs> One of the all-time greats to do it. When I was with the Bears, we played against him in Minnesota, a phenomenal player. But at the introductory press conference from Mario, he was there. Yeah. Okay, and there were several other guys there. And it's fascinating because Mario started as a GA back in the you know, 98, 99, 2000. That's where the whole thing started, back when Brian McKinney and some of those great teams got a chance to, to know him and see him at a different level. And I thought that was a, I thought that was very important. So many of the guys showed up for that introductory press conference. And I know that meant a lot to Coach Cristobal. Frank Latson, the intended receiver there for Tyler Van Dyke. DJ Ivy in coverage. You know, Coach Cristobal, before he, when he became a GA, you know, he has families in law enforcement, and he almost became a Secret Service agent. Do you know this story? No, I do not know this story, but I want to know this story. Here's Tyler Van Dyke. I'll get to it in a second. Dumps it off over the middle to Arroyo at the 40, beyond the 45-yard line, so first down there. So he wanted to be a Secret Service agent, and he went through all the tests. He was accepted. He was going to go into the Secret Service Academy, and told the staff, hey, I'm going to go do this. This is what I'm going to do. And then had second thoughts and said, you know what? If you'll take me back, I'll do it. I want to see this coaching thing through. And look where he's wow. at right now. Wow. I'm sure. I'm sure he would have been a great Secret Service person, FBI, whatever you want. The dude is intense, and he's very intimidating. Um, so I think he could have excelled at that, but I think he made the, the correct choice. Van Dyke goes deep down the field, but his receiver falls down there. He's kind of intimidating, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, like I said earlier in the show, no nonsense at any time. Looks like Jaleel Skinner on the ground. Check that, it's to Corey Crouch. Corey Couch, pardon me, the defensive back. Skinner was the intended receiver. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Miami Hurricanes spring game. Coach Cristobal, two-time champion at Miami, 89 to 91. Played on the offensive line. FIU head coach for five seasons. Then back at the University of Miami for a time at Rutgers for a time with Greg Schiano and an assistant under Nick Saban where he won the top recruiting award. Then on to Oregon, two Pac-12 titles, 2019 Rose Bowl champion at Oregon. There's Justin Herbert there with him and named the 26th head coach in the history of the University of Miami, signed a 10-year contract. The jersey though got a lot of love and pub that day. 
Yeah, the single digit and then the size of the jersey. I think both. Coach Cristobal looks at that and he's like, huh? What is this? I can't put this on. So I did, you know, the reporter thing at the time, put my reporter's hat on, and I, I text Miami. And I asked them, what's up with the jersey everybody's laughing about? And they said, well, that thing is spandex, number one. But it was a receiver's jersey. OK. So you know, that's for a 160, 170, 180 pound guy, not Coach Cristobal, who was an offensive lineman. I'd like to see him in the jersey, though. <laughs> Try to squeeze yeah, into just it? squeeze into that. Let's go. Oh, man. So third and four here for Van Dyke. Over the middle, it's caught by Keyshawn Smith for a first down inside the 40-yard line. Protection's good again. You know, Brian McKinney mentioned that earlier about the protection. And we talked with Mario Cristobal about selecting his offensive coordinator, Josh Gaddis. Right? He talked about the physical downhill run game. Okay? And he also talked about how he excels with protection. Though he's a wide receivers coach, he fully understands protections. We know Coach Cristobal has a big impact on that offensive line. Mentioned with Alex Mirabal, one of the better teaching offensive line coaches in the country. Feels like that's really paying dividends here early on today just from a protection standpoint. Play action for Van Dyke. Gets it away, but incomplete as Rashard Smith couldn't hold on there. Avante Williams in coverage. Good to see Parrish back in the game. Yes. I know he came in a drive earlier after he got dinged up. He was able to walk on his own power. To Corey Couch, by the way, was able to walk off on his own power as well and is being examined. Here's a pass to the flat to Parrish. They pick up another first down. Been a nice outlet out of the backfield catching the football. 12 yard gain there. Dad has called him a Swiss Army knife. Dual threat. Clearly seen that on display throughout this afternoon. How do you think uh, Lane Kiffin, who coached with Mario Cristobal on Alabama staff, felt about that transfer? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he did not love that. They, they got a really nice running back from, from TCU. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would say that, you know, when you've got quality players, you never like to see those players go elsewhere, especially in a coach that you're with. Good protection there for Van Dyke. The pass is caught by Devin Perry. He goes up high, climbs the ladder, and a pickup of four. Strong hands there by Perry. Corey Flag on the tackle. I'll be intrigued, not just with Miami, but around the country, how much more movement we have post spring ball in the portal. Oh, I think it's going to be a lot. This next couple of weeks is going to get crazy. It's going to be wild. Yeah, I'm so totally with you. Put your notifications on Twitter for sure. Dump off over the middle, almost intercepted. Arroyo. Put his paw up, but it was behind him. Corey Flagg tried to make the interception there. Misfire there by Van Dyke. Just the easy throw over the middle, slightly behind Arroyo. Third down situations. They're approaching the red zone. Important areas. Good practice moments. Situational football here for Van Dyke. So here's Van Dyke over the middle. It's caught by Latson, and he picks up a first down as they get down to the 15-yard line. By the way, I just reminded myself to set my alerts. Pete Thamel, our colleague here at ESPN, yes, I just absolutely. set my alerts to you. So when those portal maneuvers and movements start flying, it'll pop up on my phone. Yeah, I'm with you. Like, next week's kind of last round of spring games. When that's over, there's going to be a lot of movement. Players going to hop in the portal. I think they have a better opportunity somewhere else. Here's Van Dyke on the run. Restrepo with a nice catch there. Out of bounds. Able to haul it in. Strong hands there by Restrepo. Only a three-yard gain, but our fantastic camera crew going to give us a great look. Nice job by Van Dyke on the move. Concentration. This is the initial miss to come up with that football before you get out of bounds. Ivy in coverage there. The other thing about Van Dyke, he throws the ball very well and accurate on the move, both moving to his left and right there to his right. 
Hands off up the middle to Perry, and Perry gets in the end zone for a touchdown. So the Orange team putting up some more points. I think my column down around a two. Oh, no. Oh, no, seven. Oh. They're going to give him the seven. Wasn't enough of a thud. No, I guess, <laughs> I guess not. It's a nice inside hole here. Opened up. Good piece of running. Yeah, that's about right. James Williams had a runner on the six, seven yard line. Actually, they are going to give him. They're going to, you're right. They're going to call him down. They're going to say, in retrospect, enough of a thud. So the touchdown gets called back and points off the board. So a six yard gain instead of a 12 yard gain for a touchdown. And as you're looking at the score right now, big moment potentially in this game. Here's Van Dyke. Finds a receiver. Jacoby George for the touchdown. And now you can put those points on the board for the Orange team. And I like, again, I like this. I like Josh Gaddis moving the pocket, moving to his left, helps the protection on that sprint out and an easy pitch and catch from Tyler Van Dyke to Jacoby George. Nice way to cap off that drive with six. And that's Van Dyke's first touchdown today. All the other touchdowns have been on the ground. Let's go, speaking of the ground, down to the ground with Sam. So I'm I'm here with Clarence Corker, a.k.a. Pop Corker, the first black linebacker at the University of Miami. We were talking a little bit about, yeah, we were talking about how it was then and how it is now. Tell me about your time playing and, and what are the differences you see now? Well, the differences is now is that the, everybody mixed in better than what it was back during my time in 72. But then afterwards, uh, you know, the coaching staff that they have now is so much better. I mean, you got a coach for every position now. And we didn't have that back in my day. So I think that was the biggest difference. And Pop, you broke barriers. And a lot of us imagine breaking barriers. Some of us have broken barriers. What was it like back then being a barrier breaker? Well, first of all, you know, it was uh, staying at home. That was the big push is to all the guys that were staying at home from the local high schools and to stay at home. And that was a big breaker. And that way it brought more fans to the stand. So it was great. We really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, how was it assimilating uh, being the first black linebacker at the U? Well, we had a lot of experience, even though we didn't look at it that way as just being black. But, you know, we had a lot of great players at linebackers at the University of Miami, like Harold Sears. You know, my freshman year, I had a chance to remember him as he was uh, doing his thing out there. He was an All-American linebacker, but I learned a lot from him. And Bo Dunn, uh, it was just so many. It was a host of people, but I was just the first black man. Stepman, Scavella, we, all, we came from the same high school. Yeah. Tell me about, Pop, the importance of bringing all the alumni back. Uh, tell me about what that means. Uh, that means a lot because this is my first year participating. And to get to see a lot of the old players, and it, it's really great. Some of the players are very successful where they have had their careers and was able to go to the next level to play. And to get to see them again and sit down and talk with them, it was just so much fun in doing it. Uh, a lot of the new players that come, you don't really know them, but you try to get to meet a lot of the players that was here before and after. But like some of the players on the field, you get a chance to talk to them in their position and tell them how it was and how it is now. So it, it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Pop. Hey, thanks a lot, brother. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sam. Excellent work there, of course. As we see the second team going at it here, we saw Cyrus Moss get some pressure there, the young freshman. Jake Garcia and company trying to matriculate the ball. Yeah, Cyrus Moss, six foot five. He's only 215, 220. He's lean, but he's got a very high ceiling. Extremely athletic, good instincts. We've seen him now a couple of nice rushes off the edge. Maybe a name to keep an eye on for Hurricanes fans as somebody could potentially crack this rotation next season. Bishop Foreman High School, powerhouse in Las Vegas. And that one skips off the ground, incomplete, intended for Redding. On cue, Moss with a nice little bull rush, walks the tackle right into the lap of Jake Garcia, unable to step into that throw. So
So we should be nearing the end of the third quarter here in just a moment. Yep, they're not going to get another playoff. So we'll have a running clock continuing here in the second half. But the Orange team, the offense, lighting it up here. 31-21. More from Dry Pink Stadium here in Fort Lauderdale for the Hurricane Spring Game with Dusty Dvorak, Sam Acho, and myself in just a moment. Tremendous honor to have Coach Jimmy Johnson out here today. The best time of my life. And I've been through a lot. Right here at University of Miami. I went to the College Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> Not because of what I did, but because of the players and the assistant coaches I had in mind. Understand, <laughs> you're not just playing for yourself, you're playing for the guy next to you. And you're playing for all the great ones that have been here before. So, good luck to you. Get yourself ready. There was Jimmy Johnson, a man who recruited Mario Cristobal to the University of Miami, won a national championship. Jimmy will tell you he probably should have won a few more. Uh, there's a nice pass here as Miami picks up a big game. Mamarelli there, the tight end. But Jimmy still got the juice, man. Jimmy's got it. Um, I grew up in Dallas as a massive Dallas Cowboy. Oh, there you go. When I was a kid, the Cowboys were reeling off world championships. It was because of that guy. Jimmy Johnson right after he left this place phenomenal coach phenomenal motivator but the one thing whether it was at Miami whether it was at Dallas all the success he had Mario told us this it was about the work and that's one of the things he talked with these players about and I thought his coach Chris Ball put it properly that's the secret sauce is putting the work in and that's what coach Johnson was trying to instill upon that team Mamarelli, by the way that previous catch 26 yards incomplete there to Redding coach Pry, coach Elko a couple of those new coaches we're talking about coach Pry going to Virginia Tech try to get that Hokie program going and obviously Mike Elko leaves A&M to take that Duke job Garcia with a nice pass there complete to Brashard Smith near the sticks yep picks up the first down gain of 11. Nice job going to the ground and completing the process of that catch. Good strong hands there from Bashard Smith. You know, we saw earlier too on a bit of a reverse in the first half of this game, but Bashard Smith going back to last year, you know, he is great with the football in open space. He's still got to refine some things, maybe as a route runner. But we even heard Josh Gaddis say they're going to be creative in finding different ways to get him the football. Here's Garcia again. Pump fakes, takes off. They'll blow the whistle after a six yard gain. We saw Jimmy Johnson there. That was Coach Cristobal's coaching clinic here at the University of Miami. Brought in a bunch of his friends at Orgeron. Jimmy Johnson, obviously, his former coach. Sean McVay, Super Bowl champion, was invited. He came and he got to work with those kids. Look, I deal with Sean a lot. I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I've become fairly close with him, just covering him over the last several years. You want to talk about a guy who eats, breathes, and sleeps football, just mm. like Coach Cristobal, it's Sean McVeigh. No question. Coaching tree he started to put together is unbelievable. It's wild. I mean, I joked with him. I said, unbelievable. I said, listen, I'm just standing next to you. Can I get a head coaching job <laughs> somewhere? Because everyone else seems to get one. That's about what it is. If you're an offensive coach for him, you're probably next in line. Uh, for a head coaching opportunity, but that's part of what coach Chris Ball wants to do, right? Wants to expose these guys to great coaches that know what it takes to be at the very top of their respective sport. Speaking of the very top, Cyrus Moss, one of the best young freshman pass rushers with the pressure there. I like what I've seen from him, George. Third and four. Garcia gets it to Perry. It is complete, but will be shy of the first down there. Malik Curtis on the tackle there. Let's send it down to Sam with a special guest. So I'm here with Chuck Foreman, also known as the Spin Doctor. Chuck, you have a, obviously you had a great NFL career. You played here at the U. You had more basketball scholarships than football scholarships. Tell me about like you, you revolutionized the game. You, you were Marshall Falk before Marshall Falk. Tell me about that. Well, actually, when I played here at the University of Miami, I played running back, wide receiver, cornerback. 
and it prepared me for the NFL. And then I got went there, and the Minnesota Vikings used me as a wide receiver, slot back, running back. I was a fullback, not a running back, but we put it all together, and all those, you know, all this, all the things I learned here, I took to the NFL, and I guess. That's what happened, so it's a good thing. Yeah, there's a producer in my ear who's saying he remembers watching you, and he's, he's in shock that we're talking right now. I went back and I watched some of your highlights. The spin move, you were called the spin doctor. Tell me about that spin move, and did it start here at the U, or did it start somewhere else? No, actually it started back when I was in high school. Back in the day, there was a basketball player by the name of Earl DePearl Monroe, and he played for the Baltimore Bulls at the time, so he'd come up and he'd spin. Well, I played basketball, and that was one of the things that we did, spin to go take the jump shot. Well, anyway, I think we were playing the Houston Oilers my rookie year, and I saw some space over here. You know what that's like. <laughs> and I said, well, how am I going to get there? And that's when I broke the spin out. And I got over there, and I said, wow, that works. So I started doing it at the right time, because if you ever got caught in the middle of it, that would have been curtain, no doubt about it. Yeah, all right, so Earl the Pearl's watching right now. You still got the spin move? Very slow, man. Very slow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Nice, nice to meet you. Gotta watch you all the time. Thank you. All right, Sam, thank you. Chuck Foreman, very slow, but still got it, Dustin. Still got it. I used to, I just think of the spin as the B button. Old Sega Genesis. Oh yeah. Yeah. Give me that B. Now it's it. like left. RL1, I, don't I know. believe, I, I'm, on PlayStation. I'm, I'm, I'm I could be wrong that. about that, but I believe it's L1 now. But yeah, the B button. B I'm with button, you. Maybe circle on the old uh, yeah. PlayStation. Yeah. Back when we would play uh, NCAA football, which hopefully we get a chance to see that. Well, now with come NIL, back very soon. I think it's possible. I think it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Peyton Matoka is now in at quarterback. Handoff up the middle to Isaiah Cashwell as we're getting deep down the depth chart here. Let's go back to Sam down on the field. Hey, so we got Ray Bellamy here, who was the first black player ever at the University of Miami. Ray, you talked about the legacy of some of your teammates here. You said the best thing that ever happened was them showing up. Tell me about your time at the U. Well, when I was at the U, it was uh, challenging times for everybody all over the country. I was on the cutting edge of the civil rights movement. So, you know, no one else was there of color but myself. And, uh, of course, I had some things happen out there, you know, people going out of their way to give me that last little thump. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And so it was uh, it was very challenging. However, when the guys started to arrive, and I mean the guys, the black athletes started to show up there, it took a lot of pressure off me because now all of a sudden people could not take cheap shots on me. And somebody was there to help me and to stand up and say, listen, you don't do that. You do that to him, we'll do that to you. So it was, a, it was a thing that we all came together, uh, kids from all walks of life, whites and black, and we learned how to live with each other. We learned how to respect each other. And that was the greatest thing that ever happened to this university. So, Ray, you were also the first black student body president. I've been watching here. You're full of charisma. Tell me about that experience, not only being the first black player at the school, but the first black student body president at the University of Miami. Well, again, challenges came. I mean, um, well, I came from a split ticket and I ran as an independent. And I told him I was the only moderate in the race. And uh, I uh, uh, ran against a guy named Stu Weiss and he was picked to win the election. But I told him I was gonna win the election. And the reason I was gonna win the election is because I didn't speak to people because I wanted to vote. I used to speak to people all the time and be kind to people. He started being kind and speaking because he was trying to give them the vote. After we came in on the split ticket, I had a lot of work to do because I had to bring our leadership team together. And I was able to do that. As a matter of fact, one of the greatest compliments I've ever had in my life came from Dr. Henry King Stanford, who was president of the University of Miami at the time. And he was the one that's responsible for me being here. And he said to me, when he was in America's Georgia, I used to go visit him all the time. And he said, Ray, when you came to the university, I had certain expectations of you. He said, I did. And he said, you super exceeded my expectation. So for a man like that to say something like that to me, hey, I was like astonished. I mean, I, so we did some things. I fought for all students. We did a lot of incredible things. And the good thing that Dr. Stanford always told me that I did is I bought the books out in the black. <laughs> so, we had a we had an opportunity to balance the books 
and so that was good. Yeah, thank you so much, Ray. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, they're telling me, my said, you could buy another book, Let the World See You. That's a book that I wrote. Uh, but even more so, you've been trying to bring over Kerry Baker, the first black quarterback, and he's here as well. Last thing real quick, the alumni here all coming back. Why is that important? Because we need to support the team, and we need to let the world, the nation, see what the University of Miami did. See, a lot of people don't realize, but the University of Miami wasn't just the first to give black athletes an opportunity, but they was also the first to give females an opportunity. And in modern time, our first national championship was won by the female swim team. So the University of Miami taught the nation how to do it, and they got rewarded very handsomely because they got five national championships. <laughs> Is anybody near me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, and of course, Ray there. What a spokesman for the University of Miami, Ray awesome. Bellamy, man. Awesome, awesome stuff from Ray Bellamy. What a great man. First student body president, first black student body president here at the University of Miami. You can see why. I mean, that man can run a campaign. And I thought, and this is something I'd love to ask you about, you know, just the brother, the brotherhood, yeah. the camaraderie of the players coming from all different walks of life. You understand that because you played the game. It's essential. Um, you know, whenever Coach Cristobal stood up there at his introductory press conference, he said, we got to make this thing tight. We got to bring this thing in tight. And he was talking about everybody. He's talking about the fans. He's talking about the donors. And he's really talking about the former players. Because when you wear a uniform at a certain place, it's different. You've got sweat equity in that place. It means a little bit more. Coach Cristobal has talked to that, and he wants to welcome all that back here to Miami. And based off everyone we've talked to, say at practice, there's former players everywhere, and he wants to invite everybody to practice because he believes that's how they're going to get back, getting to work, practicing. But you've got to embrace the players of the past, and, and Mario is off to a great start in that regard. Cyrus Moss there with another pressure. We'll get to Cyrus Moss in a moment. Excellent point by you about just that brotherhood. And Mario's trying to build that here. And he's got some young guys. But every coach we spoke to, whether it was Coach Cristobal, Coach Gaddis, or Coach Steele, they said, man, the kids have bought in. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can ask for, right? It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit more demanding. It's going to be a little bit more physical as we welcome a new quarterback, Aaron Howard. Here are the two earlier quarterbacks, Tyler Van Dyke and the backup, Jake Garcia. I don't think there's a quarterback controversy in Miami. There's a lot of different competitions going on around the country, not here. Tyler Van Dyke is the guy, but you always have to have a quality backup. Good showing today from Jake Garcia. Absolutely, and I think Jake Garcia still has plenty of time to grow. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. He, he, I think he could be the future quarterback at the University of Miami when Tyler Van Dyke moves on. Here's Matoka. Lots it down the field, incomplete. Let's look at the schedule one more time for the University of Miami. They've got Bethune-Cookman and Southern Miss, and then that game at Texas A&M, you believe, is a litmus test. It's a great measuring stick to see exactly where you are. Uh, A&M has got a really good roster trying to figure out their quarterback position. If Miami can go there and get a win, man, that will be a statement to college football. And then, obviously, as you work your way down, going on the road to Clemson won't be easy. You catch Pitt at home. You catch Florida State at home. Again, I, I think this schedule actually sets up really well for Coach Cristobal in his first year. It's funny, when I talked to Coach Cristobal before the game today, nice pass and catch there, picks up a couple yards to Brashard Smith. He said, hey, man, I want all these games to be noon. I want the heat, the humidity <laughs> yeah. to wear everybody down. He told me about a game they played against Iowa back in the day when he was here. He's like, the first quarter, they were mauling us. By the third or fourth quarter, we were mauling them. The heat, and it's the humidity. It will wear you down. And use that to your advantage, right? Whenever you have to get somebody to come from not the same climate, it can be a real difference maker throughout the course of a game. I was here for the 2000 Miami-Florida State game. That was the game Miami had lost five straight to Florida State. Butch Davis was here. That was that Dorsey, Santana Moss, Reggie oh, yeah. Wayne squad, Vilma, all those guys. They were just starting to try to get over the hump that year. It was so hot. 
that people were passing out. They ran out of water at the Orange Bowl. I'm not even joking. Wow. You could not buy water at the game because it was that hot. No clouds in the sky, 95 degrees, and it felt like 100% humidity. No thank you. I'm a bit of a heavy sweater, <laughs> especially if I'm having to commentate that game. That would be tough. I like it more than the polo in that kind of weather. We got under a minute here in the game on the running clock. The Orange looks like they're going to win, barring something catastrophic here. And the white team trying to put some pressure here on Matoka. And the whistle will blow. So what do you make overall of what you've seen today? Look, it's, first of all, everyone's not here. I mean, it's a, it's a simulated scrimmage. But I just, I like the mindset and the shift of the identity of where this football program is headed. And again, talking with everyone we have the last two days around the program, there's 100% buy-in as you just alluded to. I think championship program sustainability at the highest level has to be built on physicality and at the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly how Mario Cristobal sees it, and that's exactly what he's trying to establish. So. I thought that the, the way that they've been able to run the football, Tyler Van Dyke's a real player. It's going to be an interesting team in 2022. And that'll be the last play of the game here for the orange and white game. 31-21, orange defeats white. When you look at this team moving forward, what is the one thing you need to see for them to have success? They've got to be able to establish a line of scrimmage, run the football effectively, take some of that pressure off their quarterback, and then on the flip side, some guys are going to have to step up and merge along that defensive line, being able to get after the quarterback, create negative plays. It is paramount to, to really getting this thing rolling. That's what I look at, and that's the work that I think really needs to be put in the rest of this offseason before next fall. Their coaching staff is elite. I don't think there's any question about that. And we'll see if Tyler Van Dyke and company can make some noise in the ACC.